Jamie, you got tomato? Y'all got, got plenty of tomatoes and stuff, don't you? Can't ask a man from over by Woodbury if they need tomatoes. I know you got them. <laughs> That's my Uncle Jamie. And uh, him and his boy, we used to do a lot of hunting. He, he passed away on a motorcycle wreck a couple years ago. Pretty sad deal. But he lives over there in Booger Bottom. Tougher than hell. Man, all I've ever known is to, is to be myself. And uh, even at times in my career, you know, it felt weird, you know, being country and, you know, sometimes mispronouncing stuff. But hey, it's the way good Lord made me and my last name's given to me and it's the way I was raised. So all I know is to be myself and, you know, and, and spit it like I know it. And, and uh, really throughout my career, I learned so much from traveling with Realtree, hitting the road, going to these different places, running a camera. I'd like to think I also had a chance to share some knowledge I learned from my papa and in, in, in a way of life of just being simple and being real. But um, it's been crazy, man. I remember my first plane ride was with Realtree, David Blanton, Bill Jordan. I think Walter Parrott was on that flight and was going to hunt turkeys. But that same year, we went all over the country and Bill got his grand slam with a bow and I was fortunate to video that. And so uh, I can't even believe that that everything happened the way it did. It would just be like a door would open, you know, through my opportunity at Realtree, and it'd be running a camera. Next, it'd be having a chance to learn to edit a little bit, and then produce, and then running to Atlanta to trying to post an online show for TNN back in the days, to having a chance to throw these creative thoughts about how we might can better the Monster Bucks videos and start this bow tournament with me, Bill, and David. Back in the day, Steve Barkowski, getting T-Bone Turner and Jeff Foxworthy involved, and then, and like, Next thing you know, I'm having a chance to host a show called Realtree Road Trips to be a representative and to be an ambassador, to be able to talk about this lifestyle. And something that at the beginning of my career, I was a little insecure about the way I talked, how I got excited when I shot something, you know, you know how you presented yourself, the way you dressed. Now I realize that's the things that gave me a chance to hang my hat on and, and find success with. And I realize that the way I live my life and who I am really resembled millions of other people across the country. And so I'm proud to be in that fraternity. And I think to the day I die, I'll still be celebrating that kind of life and those kind of people. Old 63, this was my, this was my go-to ride. It was yellow in high school. But this is me and my dad. It, we put a 327 in this old bad boy. Uh, I bought it from a guy named Larry, uh, a guy that worked with my dad. He had an old 327 that he had no Chevelle, and we pulled it out and dropped it in this. And my first date, I ever took a girl out on a date, I had everything right with it except my radiator, and I'd been putting stop leak in it, and the dang radiator blew up and drained all the water out of it, and uh, and I blew my engine up on my first date. But but I'm proud of this old thing. My mama, that's the happiest I ever seen my mama. My dad, we had been working on this thing and finally the Christmas when I was 15, uh, my dad had painted it yellow and pulled it up and my mom cried, I was so happy. And, uh, and we had it, thank goodness we finished it in because I tooled her around a lot in this truck and um, she ended up passing away when I was 16. So it, she was so proud of this truck and I even had Mama Susie put on the dash right there. So kind of a cool deal. You know, we all write down these things when we're youngins of, of what we'd like to have. I'd always wanted a farm. You know, I'd always wanted a place that my kids could hunt. I'd always wanted a family. You know, I'd always wanted an opportunity to have a tractor and, some, and to plow some ground and to, you know, maybe have a bulldozer or something. I said, but all those, as simple as that is, it was a pipe dream. And to think that because I had won a few turkey calling contests that now I get a chance to have some material things that mean the world to me, but not in the way that the material, it means the world to me in the fact that if I can do it, anybody can, and it makes me realize that the American dream's still alive, son. Anybody says it ain't, it is. And I tell you one thing, they ain't no stimulus money bought any of this stuff. It was through the opportunity and the hard work and the things that was presented to me early and staying gone from your family and working and grinding and trying to do your best to create entertainment you know, for the industry, as well as just hardcore work from sweeping floors to mopping to whatever it took. When those doors would crack, I remember looking back, I was ready to go.
property is 550 acres. It's not high fence. I know a lot of people ain't gonna believe that, but it's not high fence, free roaming. But I've had this place since 2015, and uh, you know, and I, I will, like a three and a half year old deer, I'll let them slide by. But if they get four and I like them, and they get within range of me and my youngins or my friends, because my name's on the tax bill, and even though the bank technically owns it, I got the right to murder them, so I always say I raise kids and kill deer. I seriously, I can't believe it. I mean, really, that I have a chance to do what I do for a living. And oddly enough, when it first come up that I had a chance to start working for Realtree as a guide that later turned into a camera guy, I remember circling around. My grandmama, my uncle was there. My dad was already on board because he knew the, the, the opportunity that was there. But I just had a job doing heating and air work and I had my own van. And I remember my whole family, I might as well just went off there and got hooked on drugs. Like, you're gonna make a, you, wait a minute, Mike, you can't make a living turkey hunting and, and doing this and, and fishing and hunting. And, and even though Realtree is a big hunting family, they saw it all as one big outdoor you know, deal. And so they just couldn't comprehend. And to think that my family didn't know I could make a living doing this, to now looking at my passion for it, an opportunity that has led to really things beyond my wildest imagination. That's right. You can bait in Georgia. Got me a brand new camera. Put the sucker up. This will send it right to the phone. <laughs> Used to, these old cameras would send a, a, a text to you. They still will. You can turn off your notifications, but they send a text. And I was getting texts all in the middle of the night. And my wife just knew it was some old crazy girl texting me, and I was running around. It was just my, my deer camera. And boy, do you like getting them texts or notifications. Life can be dangerous. I mean, the world ain't safe. and and. When you get out there, you'll, you'll realize it real quick. And it was crazy for me, because I'd been to work at Realtree full time for 10 years. And I'd done everything from run a camera, to edit, to produce, to, to help give seminars. I'd had a chance to become a personality through the turkey calling. And then David Blanton and Bill gave me a chance to host this show called Realtree Road Trips. It had been a crazy success. So now, in a lot of ways, I had completely made it. A lot of my bucket list stuff had been checked off. And so now I'm sitting here and I got this huge opportunity and it had got to the point to where my opportunity had outgrown the corporate structure of Realtree, meaning it wasn't fair for me to be able to do things and break policy parameters, you know, when, when somebody else there in the company could. So Bill, after many talks and, and, and talking to management there, I was kind of at a place to start a new life and try to start a show while I still connected with Realtree and so Bone Collector was this idea I had and to grab somebody called Nick Munn and T-Bone Turner, still staying real close to the Realtree family, but this time it wasn't on Bill Jordan's gamble, it was completely on my gamble and that was the first time. So actually, I never truly left Realtree, I just left to the point to become independent and become my own business man and let me tell you something, if you think that ain't scary, I was terrified, but I kept remembering something my football coach told me. He said, if you get satisfied, you get worse. You either keep going or you get worse. You know, I've been doing this since I was 17, 18. I'm still not satisfied. I'm still trying to make improvements. I'm still trying to take that next step. It's just lifetime. It takes you down a different direction as to where you're trying to improve. So a lot of my hunting goals, a lot of my career goals, I've obtained that. But I definitely want to go back and to, and to make some improvements because there's no way you can take a magnifying glass and look at one thing. And that's what I did with my career and opportunity and, and not, you know, out of your peripheral, forget some things and let them go by. And for me, you know, my youngins and, and my wife, man, I realized that they've been there through, with, with me through a lot of this. And so, you know, now my focus is around this farm. Obviously I become a pecan farmer I'm trying to figure this out. It's a new challenge, and I want to be the best. I want to be the best dad. I want to be the best husband, and I want to take what I got here and everything and try to create that legacy that maybe I got something to lead to my kids. Maybe I got something that, that I can show them how special it is to have their youngins 
to come and one day have a chance to hunt you know, their own ground. And so for me, owning a little old farm that had deer and turkey, that I could put food plots in, that I could have me some feeders and I could put trail cameras out, and my wife could hunt it, my kids could hunt it, my friends could come hunt it. Man, that's just as sweet as, as having a great career. So uh, life's got a lot of things to juggle and life is dangerous. We've certainly seen that with COVID. But you know what? Hell, I could get hit by the mailman running to go check the mailbox today. So I'm gonna keep living, keep striving, trying to keep something going and try to make a difference. And I promise you, I ain't gonna let nothing change me. I'm gonna stick to my roots of how my dad raised me and where I come from and what I believe in. And I believe in this culture. I believe in the hunter. I believe in the conservationist. I believe in good Lord family and country. And when you got those simple things as your foundation, I don't think you can go wrong.